One of the greatest things we can do as Christians is to set the right example. People are always looking at us to see how we live our lives. All the things we do or don't do gives us an identity before God and mankind. People look at us and make specific judgments about us and the way we live our lives. What we do and don't do can bet our identity or destroy it. So, doing nothing is not actually doing nothing, as some people think. By doing nothing, you would actually have to be doing something. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 13 to 14, that we are the salt of the earth and light of the world. This means we, to, we are to affect the people around us. They have to be able to learn from the example we set for them. What example are we setting on life? Are we role models? Would people with good intentions want to be like us? There are questions, these are questions we ought to be asking ourselves. What perceptions do church members, co-workers, schoolmates, friends, relatives have about us? Are they comfortable in our presence? Do they want to be friends with us? Would they confide in us? Would they ask for advice on their personal problems? Would they ask us to help them in any other way? Do they think we are fair in our dealings with them? Paul understood the importance of being a good example. Notice what he told Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.12. Set an example for believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Think about these five things. Now ask yourself, do I set a good example for believers in the way that I speak? Do I set a good example for believers in the way that I live? Do I set a good example for believers in the way that I love? Do I set a good example for believers in the way that I exercise my faith? And do I set a good example for believers in purity? Hopefully we can answer yes to each of these questions. To be sure, let's think about these areas. Number one, we need to use our tongues in a responsible way. We should use words that people would listen to, words, words with delight, positive words, encouraging words, words that build people up, words that bring value to the listener. Some people speak toxic words almost on a daily basis. Some seem to speak such words almost exclusively. Each time they open their mouth, you can be sure they are on a mission to hurt somebody. This is not what God and this has not been a good example in speech. We must set an example in life. People observe how we conduct our lives in general. If we are setting a good example for believers in this regard, they should end up desiring to be like us. They are watching the way we act as, as well as how we react to things. Number three, we must set an example in love. The greatest form of love is a gap love. This means you, you are most concerned with the interests of others. We put others ahead of ourselves. We love by sacrificing for others. We love like Jesus loved. We should set an example in the way that we exercise our faith. People should be able to tell we are Christians by the way we exercise our faith. They should, they should see we are not ashamed to call ourselves Christians. They should see we are faithful in our Bible study, praying, and church attendance. We should set an example in purity. With purity, we set ourselves apart from ungodly beliefs and practices or actions. Being fully conscious of who we are in Christ Jesus, our standards are different from the standards of the world. Paul is teaching us that we ought to be pay, pay careful attention to how we walk this earth as Christians. Whatever we do or say contributes to the perception that people will have about us. If we take advantage of other people, if we are always angry, if we exhibit arrogance, then we certainly do ourselves harm when it comes to our example. Many people in this world today do not see good examples. They do not see honest, decency, and integrity. They do not see good conduct. God requires that we be different from others. The greatest form of all these is Jesus Christ. He gave us an example. If we follow the example of Jesus, then we can set a good example for others. As he went about doing, he truly was an example in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. We can look at his life and see how we, how we need to live our lives. We can never be perfect like Jesus was, but we can try our best to do as he did. When Jesus said to be the salt of the earth and light of the world, he was, telling, he was saying to be a good example. When Paul wrote to Timothy, he was saying to be a good example. When Jesus lived the life he lived, he was showing us how to be a good example. So what about you? Are you setting a good example for others? Good morning. Hope everybody enjoyed fall that happened last week as we had uh, winter come in last night. It was actually a little bit warmer this morning than I was actually anticipating it to be. But it's nice to get that break from that heat that we've had for a while. Uh, before we get started this morning, we'd like to take prayer requests. If you have any, uh, go ahead and shoot and I'll 
start taking notes. Tell me that name again. Paul Hamilton. <coughs> Paul Hamilton having heart surgery. Laverne Coker. Maggie Hester. John Rook. June Cupper. Nathan Pirtle. Hollis Sparks. Burks. Adelou Tennyson and Jerry Inman. Is Norma doing okay? Yeah, the Warner family and their losses recently. Brother Rick's been through a lot with. Uh, Losses he's had. No, ma'am. Linda Beard. She, she's hiding from me. There she is. Hi, Linda. We're going to pray for you anyway. We're glad that you're here. <laughs> Sir, the vote on Tuesday, and Brother Jim's giving me some information I'm going to share after we have our prayer. Anyone else? Greg Pollock in, in his travels, and as he uh, spreads the gospel. Those that have had me in class know I like to ask for prayers at Thanksgiving. Linda, you're definitely one of those. The other prayers of thanksgiving that you have today. Okay. There's nothing. If you would bow with me, we'll go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne today thanking you for the opportunity to be here today, for the health that you provide to us, to, to allow us to come and worship you, and to open up our hearts and minds to to learn more and to strive to do your will, Father. Father God, we want to give you all the praise and glory that you're due. And, and at this time, we, we kneel before your throne in petition for your, your healing hands, Father, for your comfort, for those that are in need of comfort. Father God, we've listed many today that are in need, that are going through different ailments. Father, we pray that you will be with each one of them, be with their families, be with the doctors, be with us as a church who, is, who acts as your hands towards them, Father. I'm going to provide to them what they need. Lord God, we are thankful for blessings in life. We're thankful for Sister Linda and her ability to be back with us today. We pray for her continued health. Lord God, we pray for Greg, who's acting as a missionary to, uh, this next week and two, for this congregation as he goes, and, and for you, Father, as he goes and, and spreads the word on foreign fields. We pray for his safety and his travels. We pray for a, a fruitful harvest while he's there. We pray for, for good listening ears, that for itching ears that want to know your truth and, and want to seek you, Father. We pray that he will have a great work there that he will give you the honor and glory for. Father God, we pray for our community as it is uh, having an upcoming election this week. Father, we pray that 
you'll be with all those that will cast a vote this week, that they may do so with a long view towards what's appropriate in your sight, Father. We pray that those that struggle with, with alcohol will, will not fall into temptation from it, Father. May we keep that temptation far away. Father God, be with those that have led this charge, Father. Be with those that have strived to keep this community, um, keep it dry, Father, in order to, to honor you, Father. Father God, we pray all these things, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. For those that uh, have driven down the 145, one, uh, down 2nd Street here, you know one of the ways we've tried to reach out to the community is uh, through the advertising there at Dodges. And I know people have seen that. I've seen comments on Facebook about it. I've seen, uh, I know you've seen the the advertising we've done on, on our own marquee. We've put in full page paper ads in the local newspaper. We've had uh, contributed to articles for the Daily Journal and uh, trying to give out statistics and information regarding what uh, the dangers that, that alcohol can pose. Uh, so the Sunflower uh, Church has issued out a, an advertisement as well. We've advertised on Facebook. We've advertised through the radio. Uh, later this or in the next, I guess, Tuesday, we're going to do a call, call a member. I guess that'll probably be tomorrow, uh, reminding everybody in our congregation to go out and vote if you're uh, eligible to do that in the city here. And we want you to, to know that our eldership is strongly uh, behind the vote against for 